Let's go in there. Just pretend you register. Can you unmute yourself? Okay. Yeah, you're okay. good. good. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Cancer Genomics Workshop. My name is Xiaolong Tan. I am currently working as a postdoc researcher in the biological chemistry department. My PI was Dr. Michael Carey. Uh, I have been joining UCLA for over four years. And uh, since I joined UCLA, my research is focused on cancer genomics and uh, 3D genomics. Uh, in my cancer genomics projects, I explore the alterations in the uh, 3D genomics pattern and the epigenomic landscape changes that cause the cancer transcriptomic changing. During this cancer genomics project, I have extensively used this uh, Cancer Genome Atlas or TCGA database to facilitate my research by analyzing over a thousand of those uh, non smell cell lung cancer uh, patients' uh, genomic data sets uh, to support my research. All of the, those data I analyzed are freely available online. I have seen the roster. I understand some of you may not have that much of experience with coding, but that's okay. Um, I, I have been there as well. When I was a graduate student, my research only focused on bench work. So I learned how to code and do the pipeline data analysis uh, after I joined UCLA, uh, particularly through our QC BIOS workshop. So for the next three days, let's uh, code together to explore how to leverage this uh, TCGA database to facilitate uh, our research. Here is a brief uh, introduction of our work schedule. Uh, today, we will not directly start coding. Um, instead, I will introduce you a website-based tool called the GDC portal to uh, query, or we call it explore, to download and uh, do some basic analysis on this website-based tools. And I'll also introduce you a, a Linux-based command line software called the GDC client. We will use this uh, software on our Hoffman 2 cluster. I'll show you the case how to use the software to download large cohorts of data sets. And uh, after that, I will introduce you about the TCGA Sparkle system to make you have a feeling about how their data has been organized and stored on the platform. And eventually, I'll introduce you a, uh, another website analysis tool that I found quite useful for quick check of some uh, a frequently mutated gene or something you want to check for very like a short quick time. We will start coding in day two, mainly through this uh, Bioconductor R package called TCGA BioLinks. So please make sure your laptop has installed R and R Studio and the version is about 4.0 before tomorrow. If you have difficulty installing it or you don't want to mess up with the current version of your R on your laptop, you can use one of the PC at the back of our classroom, which uh, necessary packages has already tested and installed. Um, in day two, uh, we will mainly use this uh, TCG about links package to uh, query, to retrieve, and prepare those uh, download data sets into our R system. And afterwards, uh, I will show you some connecting downstream analysis uh, packages which I will use two examples. One is called Math Tools, and the other is called BSeq Tool to show you the case how to perform uh, downstream analysis following this uh, data downloading. Um, and in day three, I will also show you two examples. One is a Kaplan-Meier survival curve, and the other one is a UMAP, a dimension reduction algorithm. I will show those two cases as examples to how to perform deep downstream analysis following this uh, TCG about links package. The goal of this workshop is uh, for you to get the ability to retrieve and analyze a specific cohort of the data from TCGA and similar additional uh, platforms uh, tailored to your individual research interests. Um, do we have uh, students who wish to take this workshop for credit? Okay, so here's another uh, information for the grading rules. There will be a 25% a twenty five percent of the weight as participation. And after uh, day three, there will be a short quiz 
with uh, five quick questions as 50% of the weight uh, for, for the break. And then afterwards, there will be a final homework assessment for the 25% of your weight of the weight. Okay. So this is the brief schedule of our workshops. Do we have any questions? If no more, let's uh, begin. Okay, today I will introduce you the structure of this uh, TCGA databases and how to perform the data download. So you probably have heard this uh, TCGA data form, uh, platform before, but what exactly is this one? And why do we chose this platform over the others for this uh, cancer genomics uh, uh, workshops? So here's the reason. TCGA was actually the first a government funded platform that comprehensively mapped the genomic uh, uh, data sets from uh, various cancer patients in different cancer types. This project starts in the early year of 2006, which TCGA was launched by National Cancer Institute and the National Human Genome Research Institute. Their goal was to accelerate the understanding of the molecular basis of cancer with the aim to help uh, to improve the uh, ability to uh, predict to treat and prevent this disease. They published the first batch of the data in the very early year of 2008, focused on several hundred cases of glycoblastoma. During back then, uh, the next generation sequencing data was just become popular. So they started this program in a very early age. And just within five years, in the year of 2013, they had gathered like 12 types of cancers from tens of thousands of uh, patient samples, that they were able to uh, perform their first batch of the pan cancer analysis since they have gathered enough data sets. And then another major event is in the year of 2016, which so-called TCGA data portal, which is the predecessor of the Genomics Data Commons data portal or GDC data portal for short, which we will explore its detail later on today. And uh, they finished their uh, data collection in the year of 2018. Eventually, they uh, gathered 2.5 petabytes of data sets from over 20,000 primary cancer samples across 33 different cancer types. And interestingly, just very likely, just within a month, the GDC data portal has undergoing a uh, major update thing, which they updated into the 2.0 version. They have used this 1.0 version for almost 10 years and it's just updated like less than a month ago. So we're very lucky to use that. Um, the 2.0 version uh, compared to the 1.0 has uh, basically uh, a, like a cerebral kind of one, have many new functions for the, assess for the assessment and uh, they organize their uh, cohort building ways to make it easier for the users to use. We will mainly go through this 2.0 versions for today's workshop. So it is the comprehensive data collection that make this TCGA program so unique. Uh, as I mentioned, it, it, is the one of, it is the first program that largely sequenced uh, cancer patient samples from various cancer types. And importantly, another great advantage of TCGA is because of this integration of uh, multiple data types. Unlike uh, many other programs, which maybe they only focused on one aspect for, of, of the cancer data types, such as maybe one of them focused on proteomics and the other focused on genomics, TCGA has multiple uh, data types recorded for for uh, each single uh, patient sample, such as uh, they have the DNA methylation data, they have copy number variation data, and transcriptomic data and proteomic data, clinical data set, all of them in one single patient sample. And this uh, vast uh, data type is uh, help help us to uh, understand the cancer genomics from different angles. And another. Re uh, Good, good thing about the TCGA is this uh, open accessness. All of the posts analyzed the data sets are in open public. So they're all freely available online for any users from worldwide. These contribute to a collaboratory environment for the researchers can develop new softwares or diagnostic tools by leveraging their data sets. And a good reason about that is their high quality standards for their data sets. Since they sequence such vast uh, of the samples, they 
and they use a very rigorous standards from both the benchmark experiment and also from the data analysis pipeline to generating their data sets. This makes sure that their data sets, it's just make sure their data sets completeness and the quality of their data sets and users from us can use it more accurately and effect effectively. The TCGA project stands for uh, used like 12 years to finish their data collection. Such a long period of the uh, sequencing process, the technology evolves and there are sequence different projects at different years, but they use the standardized computational pipelines to analyze all of their data afterwards. This makes sure their unique, uh, their unite, uh, united data sets format. And another good advantage is this, uh, uh, standardized the pipelines are all freely available online. Their pipelines, their reference genome, their scripts for the analyzed pipeline are all freely available. This is a good model for bioinformaticians like us as well to use their pipelines as a model to perform our analysis. So, stay tuned, join Zoom, what you said, go ahead. Okay. Next, let's explore the diverse data type of TCGA platform. Okay. They have all of the samples. They have the clinical data sets, which includes the demographic information such as genders, ethnic, treatment information, et cetera. They have the biospecimen data, which includes the how the samples were collected and processed. For some selected cases, they have pathology reports and they have imaging data for the radiologic imaging or the sample uh, gallery, the sample pictures. And for the genomic data, they have multi-omics data sets for every single patient, which includes the copy number variation data, which generated from copy number microarray or, or SNP microarray. They have DNA sequencing data for a majority of their samples. This includes not only whole axon sequencing, but a lot of cases they have whole genome sequencing as well, which costs a lot of money. Um, they also have the DNA methylation of data sets from uh, bisulfide sequencing. And for selected, for some selected case of uh, cancers, they have macrosatellite instability data. For the transcriptomic data sets, which I personally feel that the TCG gathered the most uh, of the transcription data set actually, which, which in which they have both microRNA sequencing data and the traditional mRNA expression data sets. And they also have proteomic expression data sets as well. Um, for most of those uh, genomic data sets, our QC BIOS workshop has a, a corresponding workshop if you're interested in the details of their analyzing pipeline or the principles, which I, I mark those availables at behind. Uh, but due to the limitation of our course schedule, we're not going to uh, perform analyzing for all of those types of data sets. I will only show case of the examples by using the clinical data, the DNA sequencing data, and the uh, mRNA expression data sets as examples to show you how to perform an analysis. Okay. Next. Uh, there's one thing to pay attention to is their data availability in their documentation online. And there's a file states their uh, acceptance of their raw data. Uh, it says that all of their uh, raw uh, sequencing data in the BAM file are in a controlled access due to the protection of patients' privacy and et cetera reasons. But their post analysis, the data are freely available online. For example, like if the uh, I'm using an RNA seq as an example. The raw sequencing band files where the fast few files are in controlled access. But after analysis, the gene expression count in the TSV format or something, those are in open access. You don't need uh, an account for, uh, to acquire those data sets. But if you really want to use those uh, raw files to normalize with your own data or something for other reasons, I pasted a link down below that has the tutorial and a registration step that you can apply for a so-called BBGAP account uh, to get uh, the access for their uh, controlled data sets. 
this typically needs your labs PI's ERA account from an NIH grant for the application. But for our workshop, we are only use the uh, open access data sets. Uh, pertaining to the data availability, there's another concept called the harmonized data versus the legacy TCG data. Um, as before the year of 2019, uh, all of their raw sequencing data are mapped into the former version of the reference genome, which is called HG19. Those batch of the data sets are called uh, legacy data. But after the year of 2019, with the newer versions of reference genome HG38 are being more popular, they remapped all of their sequencing files into those uh, into this new version of the reference genome with a uh, new normalized standard. And afterwards, those batch of the data are called a uh, harmonized data, which I strongly recommended you use this harmonized data sets for your research. So there are three major ways to acquire for those harmonized data sets on the TCGA platform. The first way is directly download uh, from web from your web browser using this uh, GDC portal website. The second way, especially you want to download large cohorts of data sets, which the developer suggests that if you want to download a file over five gigabit sizes, you probably want to use this uh, Linux based command line software called the GDC client. And the third way is there's uh, various R packages now available to download the large cohorts of the data sets from TCGA, which I personally prefer. Um, today, we'll go through the first two ways. And tomorrow and day three, we will be using this uh, R packages. So here is the homepage of the 2.0 version of the GDC portal. So can everyone please go to this uh, website to access this website or just Google it and go, go to their link, please. Everybody access this website. <clears throat> so on this home page, and there's a summary panel here, which uh, uh, showcases the total number of projects and total number of collected uh, patients and files that are now available on this uh, GDC portal. <clears throat> this includes the, all of the TCGA projects, but also other projects. They're still building up this uh, uh, platform. So TCG now only have maybe less than 40% of their storage now. So this GDC portal, you can also leverage for other uh, different programs or projects. And then um, on the top, there are four navigation tool buttons that helps users to navigate it to the corresponding uh, function panels. The first one is called uh, the analysis center. This, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, this link navigates users to the uh, uh, analysis page, which all of their new uh, 2.0 versions of the new functions are stored in this analysis center. And the project link uh, direct user to the project page, which contains the information for each project, like file numbers, the available data types on, their, on each project, if you know uh, the exact project that you are looking for, you can go through this uh, second link to um, filter it down to the project that you're interested in. The third one, which is the cohort builder, is the major updating of this 2.0 version, which is the core step that basically every time we enter this GDC portal, we will build a cohort of our interest first by using this uh, uh, function. And then afterwards, we analyze them where we download those uh, corporate data sets. And the fourth one is the re <clears throat> repository. It's after we build a cohort, the actual the files are stored in this page that we can filter on the specific format of a file for us to download. 
and uh, the uh, this is uh, on the right side is the human outline and corresponding uh, bar plot uh, reflects on how many files are recorded in, on this platform at different organ or different primary diagnosed sites. And in a 1.0 version, you can click on and directly uh, guide you to the uh, like repository page for download those patient. But the 2.0 version, they updated this by um, after you click this, it automatically generates a uh, cohort that specifically uh, included all the cases in that organ. But pay attention to that. And this uh, cohort building will overwrite your currently working on safe cohorts. So please make sure that if, when you open up a new product, save your old ones first. And finally, on the top right of this uh, toolbar, there's a video link that's recorded all of their uh, functions that are available for this 2.0 versions. If you find some uh, difficulty using some of the function, you can go to this uh, video link to find some examples usage. And I, I think uh, there's also a suggestion box. If you want to complain, you can do that as well. Um, Besides that, on the far right corner, there's a called the GDC apps, which is a drop-down menu. In this menu, there's a file link that has all of the documentations, including uh, like an encyclopedia page of their terms they use and uh, uh, standard pipeline and the scripts that I mentioned earlier. You can find those scripts on their uh, link. And uh, there's a, uh, the uh, GDC client app downloading link that we can find the APP to download. So, okay. So here is the workflow for the 2.0 version of the GDC portal, which centers the uh, function of a cohort builder before we download the data or we perform uh, the analysis. And uh, so for the rest of the today, we're going to perform a class exercise by using their GDC portal. Since I specifically uh, studied on lung cancer, I will use lung cancer as examples. In our first uh, task, we will build three cohorts together. The first cohort is from a female lung carcinoma patients that their first diagnosed a year about 45 years old. And the second cohort is the same as the first, but the gender changed to males. The third cohort we are going to build is for uh, ignore the gender biases, but we uh, selected only for the tobacco smokers. After we build those three cohorts, we will play with the analysis functions in the analysis page to, uh, to uh, learn their new analysis function, which includes the clinical data analysis, cohort comparison, gene expression clustering, mutation frequency, there's uncle grid or uncle matrix, the protein pain and the set operations. These uh, seven functions are, um, I think four or five are new for this 2.0 version of the GDC portal. And after that, we will use the Hoffman 2 cluster by using this uh, GDC client software to download several few transcription files as an illustration to show you how to download our built cohort. So are we cool about this? Okay. So then let's build our cohort. I am going to access the GDC portal as well. Launch data portal. Let me zoom out a little bit. Can everyone see this screen clear? Mm -hmm. or it's okay, right, okay. So here's the home page, and uh, we can ac uh, access to the main user page by clicking this explore our cancer data sets button. 
Okay. So now it's the home page of the user panel. Uh, I probably want to clear my uh, pre-used papers. Okay. Okay. When you have, when you don't have any saved preset corporate yet, when you access this user panel, it should looks like this. And uh, let me introduce the structure of this website. Um, in the 2.0 version, there are several different toolbars they named for a different uh, aspect of their uh, functions. The first one is called a uh, cohort bar, which uh, documented our current working cohort and uh, total number of cases for that cohort that presented on the right. Um, it states that uh, uh, our current working cohort is a uh, unsaved cohort. If we have pre-saved cohort, uh, like I just opened it earlier, there will be a drop down menu that you can switch to your pre saved cohorts, even though you close this website. It'll save on the cloud for maybe a month. Or I'm not exactly sure the time, but in a short period of time, if you close it, your web browser and reopen it, it'll still be stored on the website. Oh, okay. Yes. It will be stored for anyone to look at the cohort or just our computer? Too? Just on your local computer. Okay. Awesome. Um, of course, there's a safety button if you finish the cohort building and you can use this uh, safety button to save your cohort. Yes. If you like register the account and save your cohort to your um, That account is so-called a dbgap account that you will need through your last PI through their uh, NIH grant to apply for that. I think if you got that account, you will get some other privilege to maybe not only for the access of controlled data sets, but store more efficiently, I would say. Yeah. But for most of us, for the open access users, we don't have that account yet. So it'll automatically save in your, I think in your computer's cache for a certain amount of time. And uh, uh, this 2.0 version has an update, uh, has a, a new function that you can import your cohort uh, by this import cohort button, which you can either type in the TCK barcode of your cases or the UID case ID, if you know that, to build your cohort, which I will introduce the, their barcode system later for today. And after you build your cohort, if you want to save your cohort permanently on your local computer, the 2.0 version has the function to that, to that to do that. You can uh, click this export cohort button, but this time it automatically generate a uh, one column TSV file that has all of the, your cases UUID or your case ID. Um, for example, if I want to click this, I, I will download a large file that included all of this 44,000 cases number, which is the total number of cases that is recorded on TCGA for now. And uh, this is the first cohort bar. Under the cohort bar, there is a so-called query bar, which records our filter conditions, which I will show you later on. Under this uh, query bar, there's three core tools, which I think is the same function as clicking this uh, navigation link. First is the project. Let's click into the project to take a look at the details of the project tool. So in this uh, project tool function on the right is the result table shows uh, the total 79 cases that are now available on this GDC portal. This includes, but, but uh, not only includes TCGA, but also other products such as Target or F FM, et cetera. Um, 
their each product is nominated by their program number and their product ID. For example, the TCGA LUSC is from the long squamous cell carcinoma product at located uh, that's from the TCGA product. And uh, there's a summary of each project. If we click on that ID, there will be a pop-up window shows the summary, like the total uh, number of cases and the data category, like what are the data categories being sequenced for this product. And uh, the right part of this is it, it's its uh, experimental strategy. And um, there will be some of the sequencing, for example, the ATAC seek after they've concluded the majority of the sequencing, they have some leftover samples where they want to keep sequencing for new technology, but they don't have the amount to, or sequencing power to sequencing all of them. They probably will uh, sequence like several hundred or several dozen of cases. You can check how many of these are available for all of their products are sequenced. And uh, you can save this as a cohort or download the biospecimen data sets from, as a TSV format or the clinical format. Sorry. Yes. What is the biospecimen? Like, is it the same information that we see here or? Uh, no, it, the biospecimen data, if we click uh, download at the TSV format, let me show you. It's basically how your samples are being collected and processed oh. yeah and the clinical data sets um, records like the clinical info such as the gender stuff and they also have the barcode information which corresponding to the cases i will introduce about the details later on today um at the last <clears throat> there are several filter selections you can filter the products of your interest based on the these different criteria, such as the programs. Like if we only focus on TCGA, we can switch on that. And the results table will automatically update it to only uh, acquire to our filtering conditions. This has become useful when you want to specifically, we want to analyze an entire cohort of, of your interest, and we can use this project panel but mostly we're using this uh, cohort builder for our specific uh, cohort constructing. You can uh, close this product uh, panel function by just uh, clicking there's a close uh, button so that you don't need to go back to the entire website and then you know, go back to the home page. Uh, we mainly built our cohort through this so-called cohort builder. In this, uh, uh, panel, which uh, are different tabs of filtering conditions from different aspects. There's a uh, general function, demographic filters, uh, diagnostic filters, disease, and treatment exposures, all of those uh, uh, generals and the clinical information you can use to build your own cohort. And uh, let me, our first task is uh, Female lung adenocarcinoma patients with their, with their diagnosed years, about 45 years old. So let's build our first cohort in this uh, cohort building. Bar. So our program, we focused only on TCGA for this time. So we can click the more button to find the uh, TCGA project. Okay. Once we click on this project, we will notice that the total number of cases should have automatically updated after a while. I have a question for the, like the, I see that there's a program called organoid. Does that mean like primary organoids are made from samples and they were, um, um, it's above TPJ, you see it? Where you check the organoids? Where you did a check mark? Here? Yeah, on the program where you select the TCJ, I see one of them says organoid. Where? Right there where your yeah. map is just a diagnosis. So are those like organoids that were profiled? I think this is another program called organoid. They just nominated it that way. Oh, okay, no worries. Oh, yeah. Great. yeah, they have now updated more and more uh, different programs, yeah. but not only from TCGA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
the data between each program? Is it because you said it's all standardized? Like, can you compare um, or I don't think? think I don't think they cross standardized between different programs. Okay. And uh, yeah, when we analyzed uh, uh, between different programs, we need to pay attention to the batch effects due to the different standardization. Yeah, but TCGA's programs are all standardized, so. And as I'll see here, uh, the total number of cases after that is uh, 11,000 now. And uh, our query bar has recorded our filter condition from co uh, from the program filter that we only selected for TCGA programs. Under the program, there's also a project filter. If you know your project, you can build on the filter as this as well. And uh, if you don't for sure to know that which exactly the product is, or you want to incorporate multiple products, you can do that by, by just ignoring that and build the uh, filters on later on. For example, um, in the long Arduino carcinoma, uh, we can build up at the primary diagnose site from the uh, uh, I think it's in from Pius and Milan. Okay, they updated too many detail functions. I have to find some time. Okay. How about let, let's uh, go to the second selection from the project that I know that our project is from uh, TCG's long Arduino carcinoma or TCG LUAD. Let's select the second filter from the project, only selected um, for TCGA LUAD. Okay. Yeah. This will narrow down the disease type to the corresponding ones that we are looking for. And uh, yeah, the primary side now are all for bronchitis and long that I was looking for. And uh, we now selected all the TCGA LUAD projects, but we only want to focus on the uh, patients for females with a uh, long Arduino uh, with their first diagnosed the year above 45. So we can filter, build those filters from the second panel, which is the demographic filter. In this filter, we have the gender filter, ethnic and uh, age at diagnosis, et cetera, those informations. And uh, since we focused only on females, we select the gender for female. Okay, now the cases is 280. And uh, the age at diagnosis, we can either select for a 10 year period of time or we can manually uh, input our interested uh, cutoff. So we can select uh, that age at diagnosis for years from but not equals to like 45 and we leave the two to empty and then apply. Okay, now our case is shrinks down to 257 and our age at diagnosis uh, is uh, presented in days. Okay, even though we selected for years, I think they need a 2.1 word to fix that. And uh, now we finished the build up our first cohort. Um, we can save our cohort and move on to the next. And there's only uh, one uh, available unsaved cohort at, uh, at each time on this website. So uh, we can save this one first and then move to the next one. Let's save this. Um, let's nominate it as TCGALUAD. And then female, age above 
45. Yes. Um, under disease type, there are three, um, including adenoma carcinoma and two other ones. Do you have to choose that? Oh, oh yes. <laughs> yes. As in our cell neoplasma. Yes, I'm I'm confused by this as well because one point over and they don't have this uh, uh differentiations. We we can uh, yeah we can click click on the our adenomas and adenocarcinoma as well. I think they have other merged types in their first product as well. Yeah, I th I think you're right. Let's uh keep the selection on this uh, disease type filter. Yeah, and then we can update our save and then overwrite our old uh, cohort to make it to the correct ones. Okay. Yeah, now the total number of cases is uh, 241 from uh, female lung adenocarcinoma patients. Yes. And uh, we finished our first cohort construction. And for the second cohort, it's the same filtering criteria, but for males. Um, so to save us some time, we, we can just uh, click this, uh, close this button in our area bar to um, as, and select our filtering conditions. And this will generate the cohort for all of the uh, genders cases. And then we can go to the demographic filters and to select this time for male and then save this as a new cohort. And then let's nominate this as TCGA LUAD male cohort with their age of about 45. So for the third cohort, we can unselect the genders by clicking the here, or we just close this on our query bar. And uh, at uh, one, there's a one selection called exposure here that if you have uh, for a certain type of cancer, such as lung cancer, they probably have some uh, alcohol history or tobacco smoking status. They're still building up this uh, um, website. Um, they haven't updated uh, the information on this panel here, but uh, they have some information on how many cigarettes per day or per year they smoked. We can manually set, set up our criteria, such as we can set up like a one package of uh, cigarettes per year, if they smoked, we can consider them as a tobacco smokers to build this kind of uh, information. But I think uh, later on, probably they will update this information so that we can uh, manually select it on those uh, alcohol or tobacco smoking status panels. And then after we click the apply, uh, we now have 306 cases for all of those uh, tobacco users for all of the TCG patients uh, from lung adenocarcinoma. And let's save this as a new cohort. Let's say TCGA uh, WAG tobacco smokers age about 45. Okay, now we have all of the three cohorts. We will uh, use these cohorts into the analysis functions to play around with their different analysis uh, functions. We can close this cohort bar now. And uh, the repository uh, tool under the cohort uh, toolbars is when we use to download the files and that I will show you later on. <clears throat> but next time, after we build the cohort, we can play around with the analysis toolbars um, 
in this analysis two bars, um, there has two functions that needs the dbgap access. One is called BAM slicing download. And uh, you can click this uh, drop down menus for each of the functions. They have a description of the, uh, the purpose of these functions. And uh, for some of those uh, functions, there's, uh, there's a video demos that, that you can um, watch the YouTube tutorial or their examples of how to use this one. Oh no, I, I don't think that's a YouTube example, just a demonstration of their uh, usage examples. <clears throat> but in their analysis toolbars, there are two functions. One is called a BAM slice and download, which is to slice the raw BAM file and download to your local computer. In this case, you need the uh, controlled access. And the other one is called, uh, sequencing read here, which is a browser track to what, uh, to look at the raw files. Those two functions, you need the controlled access to perform them. And the rest of them are on all, are all for open access. So we, we will play around with each of those functions uh, for the rest of today to um, get some feelings about how their functions are being organized and performed. The first one, let's uh, switch to uh, the uh, clinical data access analysis. And then by click the playing button, it will automatically uh, perform the analysis on our current working cohort. And since our current working cohort is all of the tobacco users, and uh, the first of their results, shows case a Kaplan-Meier survival curve with year as X axis and the survival rate of the patient in Y axis, which in this Kaplan-Meier curve, we will perform an access uh, exercise on day three using our scripts. Um, you can download each of those uh, figures by click this download button for publication. And uh, in this clinical data analysis, uh, function. On the left, there's uh, several future panels that if you want to perform additional analyses, such as I want to analyze uh, our my cohort's uh, vital status, I can click on those information and then it'll generate a new figure or, or file to uh, uh, conclude all of those uh, informations for the additionals. And uh, they have some uh, basic uh, clinical information such as the genders and uh, ethnics and race. Um, besides this uh, uh, bar plot, you can also transfer this bar plot into a Kaplan-Meier survival uh, curve by clicking this uh, survival plot uh, panel. This I feel is quite useful so that I don't need to code for a very long time to get this uh, different cohorts comparison of the Kaplan-Meier survival curve. And it also uh, recorded the p-value from those two group of comparison by log rank t-test. You can also download those, uh, all of those figures by this downloading button. And each of these uh, figures, like such as the race biases or ethnic biases, you can also click and select for a two group of uh, Kaplan-Meier curve comparison. <laughs> and also you can switch to different cohorts to perform the analysis for your another working cohort, which are automatically updated the functions of your interests, which is quite useful for this 2.0 version compared to 1.0 now. And uh, the second function is called cohort comparison. It states displays the survival analysis of your cohort compared to another one. Um, let's click on this one. Um, and this cohort comparison, it only took two cohorts. So 
one is your current working cohorts, and you can select an, an one additional cohort of your interest, such as uh, since my current working cohort for now is male, I can click on females to compare between them and then click the run button. Now, the, it generates this uh, kaplan Mars survival curve between those two cohorts with uh, p-value for statistics. So this is quite useful if you know some specific criteria of interest, you can build two different cohorts and then dump, dump it down here. And uh, you don't need to code for a long time to generate this one. Um, and also on the right side of this uh, survival analysis, there's a, a Venn diagram shows the overlapping of cases in between those two cohorts. Since our case is a male versus female, the overlapping number is zero now. And down below, there's also a gender bar plot and some other clinical information such as vital status and age at diagnosis. Yes. And uh, there's another uh, clinical information analysis function called set operations. This is mainly a Venn diagram selection that it can take up to three cohorts to filter out, uh, to generate Venn diagrams to filter out the selective overlapping cases of your interest. Uh, let's select those uh, three cohorts that we just built and then click run. <clears throat> okay, the results showcase the Venn diagram of three overlapping cohorts. Um, like you can uh, click on the part of the Venn diagram and then it'll automatically switch on the portions of your overlapping cases, such as the F3 is the cohort uniquely for a male uh, without tobacco smoking status. And then if you're interested, you can uh, export these cases as a TSV format so that you can upload it uh, to the cohort builder by the load your cohort function, or you can add this into a new cohort. So this is uh, useful when you want to like build the selection between your co existing cohorts. So those three functions are for clinical informations. And next several functions are for genomics. Um, the first one is the gene expression clustering. And let's play this function. This may take a while because of the data sets. Uh, it depends on how large of the cohort it is. And uh, basically generating a heat map. Can everybody get this one right onto your laptop? Okay. So this heat map listed uh, top 100 transcribed genes in your uh, cohorts. Um, and then they perform a clustering of those cohorts. And, uh, and the uh, uh, columns are your different cohort samples. And uh, at the bottom, it shows the gene expression value. Um, I think it's probably from a z-score, but I'm not quite sure of their of their unit. Um, here. Um, the cool thing about this one is you can 
switch to the gene of your interest to present on this heat map by clicking this 100 gene button. And then you can select this, uh, there's an edit group button, which incorporates all of the uh, um, now presenting genes. You can manually uh, type in the gene names to create your own heat map of your gene of interest and then build uh, this uh, heat map. And also there is a MSIG DB uh, gene set. It's loaded into this uh, 2.0 version. You can select, select uh, based on the like the gene ontology term or from this uh, gene set, like for the selected genes of interest you, you want to present on this heat map. And also you can download the figures by this download button for uh, your publication. Um, there's a, a lot of like adjustments such as the legend uh, figures and the colors of this uh, uh, in intensity, et cetera, you can play around with. Sorry. Yes. This is only showing now your like selected Is it just showing like the names? Yes. Uh, all of those functions when we perform, it automatically calculated the current working cohorts, and you can you can switch to another cohort. You don't need uh, by just clicking this uh, cohort bar and switch switch to another cohort. It will update. Like compare the males and the females in one. Dynamically. Way then you probably have to generate two heat maps separately. In comparison. They, they don't have a cross cohort comparison, so it's mm -hmm. not a data set. Yeah, yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Have, um, when I look at the genes, for the um, heat maps, I don't see like, for UAD, like KRAS or P53, Oh, EGFR. yes, those top mutated genes, right? Yeah, this exactly. this is a, a rank, this default rank is by transcription intensity in this one. It's not by mutation frequency. And the next function will be on mutation frequency. This function is called gene expression clustering. It only highlight, uh, trans highlighted the high, transcript, high transcribed genes, such as ERPD2 or the... Uh, like NKX 2.1 and these kind of high transcribed genes. And the next function will be the uncle grid will be the uh, high mutated genes. Okay. Yeah. This is a new um, oh, function see. in the 2.0 word. Yes. But you can manually build on the genes of interest, but it only shows the transcription intensity in this feedback. Exactly. This one. The next function we're going to play is this uh, mutation frequency. When we play this, okay, it's more like a, the result panel from the clinical analysis, which uh, showcases the, some some of the filters on the left, and. Uh, the top result is a bar plot shows the top mutated genes in your case. In this time, like top mutated genes, PP53, et cetera. And on the right is the top one mutated genes clustering. Oh, it's, it's the kaplan meier curve clustering, clustered by the top mutated genes. And then sh shows showcases if there's a survival bias between that. And I believe you can switch to other of the mutated genes, such as I can switch to this uh, MUC16, oh, cool. and then it generated the kappa mark curve uh, categorizing those by those mutation genes. This is a pretty useful function. It saves us a lot of time. And uh, there's also some other like uh, impact by different mutation uh, databases you can switch on. And uh, can switch on to the mutations if you only want to highlight that Kaplan Meier curve. I believe they want to build up some new uh, functions on, on this, but for now, they just uh, generate this uh, Kaplan Meier curve. 
And uh, for this part, you can also add on like uh, presenting columns by this uh, by this uh, column bar uh, button. If you want to show the mutation ID or something, you can show them on this here as well. And this uh, mutation table, you can also download this entire table by uh, this uh, TSV format. It's automatically ranked by uh, uh, somatic mutation frequency. Then the next function is called onco matrix. Um, this is the function that 1.0 version has, uh, but it's this time it's the similar uh, heat map like we present earlier, but this time focused on top mutated genes um... for these cases. And in this heat map, a different color indicates the different mutation types, such as the copy number loss or or copy number gain is pink or green, and non-coding nonsense mutations, something they are presented as different dots for different colors. If you want, only want to present some of the features, you can you can uh, add the variables to switch on and off some some of the interesting parts if you want. And also you can select the genes of your interest to present on this heat map by clicking on this and edit group. You can switch on the genes of your interest to generate this heat map. So the onco matrix doesn't tell you necessarily like how much is being transcribed, more so it's just telling you yes, so how much is it mutated. Yes. And there's copy number loss or okay. Yes. Awesome. And finally, a new function of this uh, 2.0 is called this uh, protein paint, which it generates a lot of pop plots that reflects the mutation size of your gene of interest. You just manually type in your gene of interest, such as let's type in PTP53, and then select this gene. And it'll generate this lollipop plot reflecting the total number of mutations in our cases and the mutate at each mutation site. And then you can drag this by uh, resize it to show more details. And it shows a protein level of mutations such as amino, uh, such as the amino acid switch and so on. Yeah, this is a pretty cool feature. Like I used to have to use this uh, math tools function to generate this plot for a lot of coding. So these are basically all of the available functions for now uh, and analysis functions for now on this uh, GDC portal. They update this website pretty frequently. I, I, and I assume there will be more available functions in a very short time. This is just uh, being updated like months ago. So pay attention to probably there are some going to be some cool features in a very short time. And uh, since our workshop today goes smoothly, let's uh, take a 15 minutes break. So it's so 2.42 for now. So let's get back here at uh, 2.57. Uh, <laughs> Am I counting correctly? So precise. Okay.
if I pause this. Okay, let's continue our class. Um, we have already built our cohort, and then we played around with those uh, analysis tools for this uh, two kind of word in the GDC portal. Our next task is to download some of our, our interested files um, through this uh, repository page. When we click into this repository page, um, this page shows the actual files that are recorded in our each project. Um, the result table on the right showcases the total number of files from how many cases and the total size of those files. Um, before we download those, all of the data sets, we, apparently we need to build up our filters. There's a different filter selection for, from experimental strategy to uh, the data category, data types, format, et cetera. Um, I'm going to use top few transcri transcriptional files as examples. Uh, we can find those information from the plus button and then this select select on RNA seq and then the results will shrink to only the transcriptional files from our current working cohort our current working cohort is males samples long adenocarcinoma groups now we have 1900 files from from around 200 cases and you saw he as you all see here there's a lot of like ban files where the slicing junction files that are in controlled access. We can filter those um, by the open accessness, and then we just click the uh, accessness to only showcase the open files. So we, 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 have, we do not have access to the, For the control. control. If you, unless your PS have the dbgap account, then you will be logged in through here using your DBGAP account, and then you can access those controlled files. Why would you need to access those controlled files? Um, like, why would somebody need uh, in my own like research experience, for mm -hmm. example, I use the model pair of the long cancer cell line and compared to the real NSLC patient samples. And then the technologically, I need to normalize between those two conditions by sequencing that for something. In this case, probably the raw file is necessary. Okay. But for most of the times, probably um, the post analyzed the files are already enough for our research. Okay. And after we switch on the open, access to open files, now we have the total number of files for 219 files for. All of the data category now is for transcriptomic profiling. And then the data type is chain expression quantification as a TSV format. And then their workflow is from a star count, which is a, a RNA seq processing software. Um, we can download all of those files uh, by uh, two ways. One, we can add all of those files to the cart by clicking this button. This will download all of those files to, to the cart, or we can manually add each one of the files into a corresponding one. To save us some memory, I'm just going to add like yeah. top three transcription files to our cart. One, two, three. And then, the preserved cart, when we click into this button, oh, it has some of the files that I played around earlier before the class. So the, yeah, the total number of the files, um, let me clean, clear this uh, card and redo that again.
Uh, that's for eight. We have a great here. That is a strategy for our seek, and then that access. I'm interested in open. We have the top three files, and then go to the cart. Okay, I think this is something new. They have a how to download files in my cart. And then it's a, there's a tutorial on how to download those files. And then you can either download files in your cart directly from the web browser um, or download a manifest file to use with the GDC data transfer tool, which is the GDC client. Um, and the card item showcases the, uh, the file names and then uh, the file size is for our each transcribed files. And then for this case, let's download the uh, manifest files and then use this manifest files to play around with the GDC client software on a Hoffman 2 cluster as an example. Um, this has become useful when you want to download large size of your files, especially over five gigabases. The website browser download way may crash your computer. Um, to download the manifest files, at the top right, uh, there's a button download card. And then from the drop down menu, there's a manifest button. We can just download the uh, manifest files into our local computer. Okay. So in this manifest file is a tab delimited uh, text format with five columns. The first uh, with the first two columns are our case ID and file names in a, a UID presentation way. And then the next three column is the presentation of the file integrity and the size and whether those files are released. And those are files information we are going to use uh, to upload it into our Hoffman 2 cluster and use this software to download a real file. Okay. I am going to move this downloaded uh, GDC manifest file to um, one of the folders that I've been working. That one. Uh, you, you can, but I am just organizing this file uh, so that uh, later on we'll upload this into the Hoffman 2 cluster to download. Um, I'm just going to use this Hoffman 2 cluster as a demonstration to use that because the last year, uh, due to the uh, compatibility of different uh, participants' laptop issue, we have some difficulty time to overwrite the authority of using the software. So I'm thinking we're just using this Hoffman to cluster as a demonstration to bypass the authorization issues that we have. But theoretically, this uh, command line based software is both uh, compatible for Linux, Windows, and Mac systems. organize this file here, and then let's log on to our Hoffman 2 cluster. Yeah. Oh. Okay. 
we log into the Hoffman. Um, yeah. Here. Do, we, do you want us to do the QR? Yes. Page or I'm, the I'm just Hoffman. about to. Like we we after we connect to our Hoffman to cluster, typically the next thing we do is uh, request an interactive node. So that's um, yeah, here. I pasted uh, scripts here, but uh, I I don't think we need that lot much of the time. You can shrink this to the h dash rt time to like one hour. Like to save some memory or I think the memory changes to two gigabits is enough. Um, so we all have Hoffman 2 cluster, right? Yeah. And, 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 oh, you don't, you, you didn't register it yet, right? Okay, and do you use a MacBook? Okay, <clears throat> then you can try to download it software and play around using your MacBook's terminal. Have you used a like Windows based terminal, like MacBook terminal before, like Linux based command lines? So everybody has locked in this, right? Do we have some difficulty locking to the Hoffman cluster? Okay. Would you just want us to now request the install the PDC? Yes. After you do that, after you successfully connect it, you install that directly to the GDC port, uh, to the Hoffman to cluster by uh, using this wget and then paste this one into your Hoffman to cluster and unzip it. And then you can directly use that software now. So once we install the GDC client once, we should be good. We should be good for all. It's just installed in our local cluster, not for the entire Hoffman to cluster. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is this on the slides? That yeah, this is on the slides uh, from the GitHub so that you can copy and paste. I'm going to our an active node as well.
Okay. And then after um, you requested the interactive node, you can copy and paste this link to install the software and then you do the uh, unzip command line to unzip that in your often to cluster. Do we install it anywhere or just like um, user anywhere user? if anywhere that you prefer? We we're just using this for a short quick demonstration. Sorry, what was the script we just make any oh, um MKDIR. MKDIR. And then space and then Do we all downloaded this uh, software package? We do. So once we unzip it, we can remove the .zip file from the. We can if we yeah that's the uh, package for installation. We can remove it. It's not a very large software though. <laughs> You know if you successfully unzip it and then generate the functioning software. Give me a thumbs up. Awesome. So um, the home page of this uh, GDC software, if you type dot slash to execute the software, you will see there's a uh, uh, several function. One is called download. The other is upload. And the third one is settings. The upload and settings are typically for developers when they finish their batch of the sequencing, they use this to upload to the cloud, which we don't have the access to. We mainly use this uh, download uh, function. And to download mm -hmm. the files, there are actually uh, three typical ways. Um, the first and foremost, if we want to download a large cohort, that's why we use the software is download through the manifest file, which is using this dash M command line. And then we type typically dot slash at GDC client and then space to give it a download command line and then dash M and then paste our uh, manifest file. And then there's another function called dash D, specify the folder that you want your file to download to. So um, before we do that, we need to upload our manifest files uh, onto the uh, Hoffman 2 cluster to perform this, um, which we'll do it in a short time. The third and the, uh, uh, the second and the third is we can directly paste the uh, case ID number, if you know that, by the UUID, and the multiple files can download it by separated by space. So let's uh, upload the yeah, downloaded a manifest file into the GDC client. Uh, yes. I'm going to use a uh, SSH command line to do that. Um, I'm going but first, I'm going to create a uh, new tab. This is my current uh, local computers. Uh, for the MacBook users, uh, you don't have that uh, GDC client, so that you don't need to upload that. You just you can you can just download it into your MacBook computer, and then w get paste it into your local computer and unzip it. Oops. 
Voy a swap this. What's the call to go back to the directory? Uh, CD space dot dot enter. So we just upload this text file to the manifest in the same folder where we have everything. Uh, we have the GTC code. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And the upload command line is here. Um, SCP space your manifest of files and then space your half into user's name and then da and then a slash oh, right. and then after you uh, copy and paste your uh, half into username you want to paste this current working directory from your Hoffman to cluster by type the pwd command line and then paste your current working directory here Af af after the uh, Hoffman to username from another page on your local computer's uh, terminal. And then you, after you type in your password, it'll upload it to the directory. There's multiple ways to upload your files. Um, you can use SFTP or rsync if you prefer it that way. this a little bit. This is wrong. So I'm in my main directory. Mm -hmm. I put list like the LS. I don't see the uh the, the text yeah, the like current folder current working directory is that what you mean? Um, yeah, so in, in my current working directory, I don't have the um, address, the text, the download on there. So how do I have the G, the manifest file? Um, so is this one, is this line of the current working folder you don't see? Oh, no, you, you have already uploaded, but you didn't find it there. So I have the GDC file downloaded. Okay. In that directory, but in that same directory, I don't see the manifest file. How do I add the manifest file? Oh, the manifest file is we formally download it via web browser into our local computer. Mm -hmm. And then at, um, from here. Uh, yeah, so yeah, exactly. I have it downloaded right now on my local computer. And then we use this uh, SCP command line to upload the manifest file from our local computer to the Hoffman to cluster. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I have a question. Yes. Um, so for the manifest file, could I see just real quickly if okay. I got the right ones? In the oh I, I've like, seen that I'm sorry you're breaking up a little but I've seen uh, your question so it's the okay. manifest that we're loading in the three file yes yes those manifest files are from uh, the three files in the cart we just added into those and then from here uh when, uh, when we were in the cart, um, the downloading drop down button, there's a manifest files. When we click this, we will download the manifest files onto our local computer here. And then we open the terminal to find 
the location of our uh, GDC manifest files and then using the terminal to upload this manifest file onto the Hoffman 2 cluster by this FCP command line. Yes. Yes. How is that a system? Yeah, only we were only able to successfully do it when we transferred it from uh um, cyberdome. Okay. So there is this, this is the problem that she says we receive is says no file or directory exists for the download. The manifest doesn't exist. You don't know what this exists. Okay. 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 No worries. None of this you got right. Like you got bypassing somehow, right? Yeah, it was a cyber gun. Yeah. <laughs> it's happening a lot, but there's multiple ways we can upload a file yeah. on the top and try to search. Yeah. But we got it onto the top as well. Okay. Thank you. Okay, sure. Did everyone successfully upload a manifest file to the cluster? Okay, so I just made a directory right now about yeah. cancer genomics, and I want to move the GDC clients and the manifest to that directory. Okay. How do I make files? Um, this this command line mv. So oh, mv move mv space your file. And uh, space your directory. Okay, fine. Oh, no space. So to download the files uh, by the GDC client by using this manifest file, we can type the dot slash uh, GDC client and then the function we select for download. And then we give it a, a argument, argument called dash M and then space and then paste our GDC client file, sorry, GDC uh, manifest file. And then if we don't give the dash D argument, it will automatically download into our current working directory. If you specifically want to down, download your file in some of the directory, you can give it a dash D argument to specify the location you want to download your file. And I just want to download here. So I put a dot at the end and then enter it. So dash D dot is the same as putting a it just a dot indicates for current working directory. Yeah. So as you'll see here, this download is quite fast. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, just an example showing downloads three files. But when you have three thousand files, this becomes useful. If we do dash D and instead of dot, we give it an You can we'll give it a, like a, yeah, give it the path of a folder you want to download it to. Does it matter for what we have to do later? Like, is it better that we do exactly like yeah, It's It's okay. It doesn't bother any. But, um, we're just using this Hoffman 2 cluster for this purpose. Tomorrow, we'll be using our local laptops 
in the R command line softwares. We are successfully downloaded the file. Awesome. Please raise your hands if you have any difficulty. Okay. Awesome. If we are all download those files, we can take a look. So each of the download files are uh, onto a each each uh, folder labeled by this uh, uh, so called case ID. This case ID is in a UUID format, which are, um, it's like here on this slide. It is just a uh, computational uh, uh, ID system to uh, defer uh, those two ca those cases. When they have a large number, they want to make sure no overlapping names exist. So they use this uh, so-called UUID label and our each of our download files is labeled in this case ID name in the each folder. And then let's randomly uh, go into a folder to take a look what are the file really looks like. And uh, the PSV files are the raw transcript, transcription uh, count file for that case. I'm just going to head for that one. <clears throat> and uh, it showcases the gene ID, gene name, gene type, the strand and uh, unstranded counts and uh, FPKM for unstranded or uh, upstream or downstream stranded informations. And uh, <clears throat> this TSV format uh, in a harmonized data set this time. It's unified multiple like the raw counts and also the uh, FPKM. So, yeah, this is an example of how to use this GDC client software to download large cohorts of data. And before the end of this class uh, for today, there's a the I, there's another concept called the, they're called the TCGS barcode system. I want to introduce you. This part is a pretty it's a little bit of uh, complicated to me in the beginning because uh, um, the file organizing the TCGA in this formatting uh, in this uh, barcoding system is a little bit chaos. Um, from, uh, from this manifest files, uh, we have our case ID number in the first column for each of our uh, cases in a UUID system, but it's not corresponding to the TCGA barcode. The TCGA barcode um, looks like this. It's, uh, oh, it's uh, blocked by, yeah, adjust it a little bit. The TCGA barcode typically looks like this one. Starts from the program number and the product label and then the participants label. And then there's a sample label, portion label, et cetera. And then also labeled by their different sequencing machines. And the reason I want to spe specify this uh, TCGA barcode system is uh, in their uh, uh, file documentation, there's a specific annotation based on their uh, TCGA barcode system with the patient 
uh, samples type. For each of the patient cases, they have collected uh, cancer tumors, but for some of the patients, they have also collected the peripheral healthy normal control samples. The TCGA barcode system at this uh, sample labels here differentiated whether <laughs> these uh, samples that collected are a our cancer sample or a control sample. Um, in, in their documentation, they claim that uh, the numbers from 0, 01 to 0, 09, which is exactly this number is quite important, which from 0, 01 to 0, 09 indicates the cancer uh, subtype. And uh, the normal uh, subtype are from 10 to 19. And their controlled samples, which are typically from the blood, are from 20 to 29. So by looking at the TCGA barcode, we'll be able to identify whether this uh, like transcription samples or, or, or DNA methylation sample are from a control or actually from the cancer patient. But to uh, unify the barcode from our case UUID to the actual TCGA barcode, we will need the clinical data sets from this uh, clinical.tsv uh, files that we can also download from the manifest, uh, download from the cart beside the manifest, or when we build the cohort, we download the clinical data set.tsv. And then we unify this uh, TSV files from the clinical uh, data sets with the uh, manifest files, which contains the uh, case UUID so that we can unify the TCG barcode to the, to the real the downstream files we are downloaded. This is quite complicated and we have to code manually to overcome these issues. But tomorrow we will be using uh, TCG about links package, which will bypass this uh, TDS coding process to unify the clinical information with the corresponding TCG barcode to the actual uh, data files that we're going to use. So uh, just this concept of uh, to differentiate the samples between cancer versus normal, which we will also use this uh, barcode system in day three when we uh, plotting the Kaplan marker or, or when we plotting the new map uh, plot the D for the cancer versus normal patient groups. So those are the majority of the content for today. And finally, before the end of today's workshop, I want to introduce another uh, website based on softwares. Um, this one is called You All Can, which, which from the University of Alabama's Cancer Research Program. And I personally found this website is quite useful. You can Google and into this website and uh, they have uh, the TCGA data sets already loaded and analyzed in their platform. Um, when you specifically found some of the genes are interested, you want to analyze their transcription intensity between your certain type of tumor, you want to give it a quick check, you can get into this website and uh, there will be a function such as typing the gene of interest and then you click the explore it will show the expression level of this protein. And for some of the cases, there have DNA methylation data presented here as well. So you will know the average difference between your normal versus cancer group. And then this saves uh, me some of the time for coding to check some of the genes of my interests. <laughs> okay. okay. Today's workshop works really smoothly. We don't have the major difficulty of uh, uh, using the Linux command line. Okay. And tomorrow we'll be using the TCG about links package to uh, learn how to query and then retrieve and load this into uh, our local computer tomorrow and then do some da downstream tandem data analysis. Okay. I hope you enjoy this workshop and thank you for the attention. That is all the content for today. Thank you.